Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mari McAuliffe and I'm the head of the Migration Research and Publications Division, which is responsible for the World Migration Report series. Thank you very much uh, for joining us for this uh, webinar, this launch event of the Educators Toolkit. Unfortunately, our colleague, Miss Eva ackerman Borier is unable to join us today due to illness and we wish her a speedy recovery, of course. I'm really delighted to launch uh, the toolkit today. It's our new interactive World Migration uh, Educators Toolkit. And the idea for this interactive toolkit stems from a pressing need to better and more have more balanced understandings of migration across the world, including in Kalaasaran contexts. It also reflects the development of the World Migration Report series over recent years, as well as its increased usage in a variety of different settings. As we know, since 2017, the series has moved from reports on a single topic to become a globally focused report covering key data, as well as salient thematic topics in each edition. And over the last several years, and especially the last three editions, we've witnessed the World Migration Report become a key reference report on migration globally. The breadth of data and the analysis contained in the report is now used by an ever-growing and diversified audience, ranging from researchers, but also policymakers, practitioners, the media, as well as teachers. The last edition of the World Migration Report, the 2022 edition, was released late last year and has already reached record highs in terms of media reach compared to previous editions. The diversification of the report's audience is not only a clear signal of accrued interest in issues related to migration and migrants that are intrinsic parts of today's societies, but also the need for IOM to further meet the needs of the report's users in our increasingly digital environments. While the Mold Migration Report is produced and written in an accessible, balanced and rigorous manner, IOM of course wants to ensure that the report does not remain sitting on a virtual shelf, but it's the foundation of digital tools for busy users across the world. The wealth of data and analysis in this series also needs to be put into action and inject life into the discussions on migration taking place in boardrooms, in ministers' offices and parliaments, as well, of course, in classrooms. Against this background, uh, we first launched last year the online interactive platform, which allows users to explore and interact with key data in a highly visual and engaging way. And together with the report itself, the interactive platform has been recognized in two international design competitions in 2021, the International Annual Report Design Awards and the International INOVA Awards for Excellence in Corporate Websites. I think this international recognition, hopefully uh, for us, validates IOM's approach in expanding the array of report materials for the digital age. And in this view, we've been working on developing three toolkits, each tailored to the needs of specific user groups. So first, to assist fact checkers, we have developed a simple toolkit to help bust those key myths on migration. And I think Celine is sharing the link in the chat. Second, we're also working with partners on the development of a digital policy toolkit to assist officials in utilizing content in a wide range of different policy settings. Uh, the toolkit will be launched in June this year, late June this year, and we have been working with partners, the Graduate Institute, as well as the Geneva Science Policy Interface, who are supporting this project. And of course, today we have developed the World Migration Educators Toolkit. Initially, it was just available in a PDF, but today we're launching the interactive platform that we're really pleased to share with you today. It offers a unique set of resources for educators around the world to teach about migration, to teach about migrants, and in the context of human geography. It draws upon the extensive research and analysis in the report itself, and it delivers specialized tools and resources that will be updated in terms of content with each new edition of the report. In other words, the World Migration Interactive Educators Toolkit aims to, to support teachers around the world as they seek to provide balanced, accurate, 
and interesting learning materials on the fundamentals of migration and migrants for teenagers and young adults. Extending the utility and the reach of our flagship is particularly gratifying and it helps the organization's role and its contributions to migration discourse globally. As you may know, IOM has been one of the longest standing supporters and producers of migration research and analysis. And IOM established the first scientific journal on international migration in 1961 and commenced uh, the World Migration Report series more than two decades ago now in the year 2000. Before turning the floor to Jenna uh, Blower, who will be uh, taking us through the interactive platform and the contents, I'd also uh, like to thank her, but also the online communications unit uh, headed by Jose Ignacio Martin Galan, or Nacho as we call him, for the wonderful conceptualization of the interactive platform. I'd also like to acknowledge too the early work of our former colleague, Adam Sawyer, as well as the consultant, Jonathan Scriven, who helped lay the foundations for this uh, new toolkit and its development. So on behalf of IOM, also like to thank the diverse partners who've been involved in the development, as well as our two discussants today, we'll hear from later, Michael Clements uh, and Alejandro Moreno Zavala. We hope that this toolkit becomes a key resource and helps teachers and students all around the world in navigating a really complex and, as we know, fast moving uh, and changing environment that is migration uh, in the world today. So thank you very much for joining us again. And I'll now hand over to Jenna, who will be able to take us through the key content of the interactive platform. Thanks, Jenna, over to you. Thank you so much, Mari, uh, for the introduction. I am delighted to be able to take you all through uh, the new World Migration Interactive Educators Toolkit. So today I will begin with the contents of the toolkit and then I will showcase uh, how to use uh, the digital platform. So to start, uh, here's a little bit about the World Migration Report series in which the Educators Toolkit stems from. Uh, the World Migration Report is the flagship publication of IOM. It presents data and information on human migration and analysis of complex and emerging migration issues. The report series uh, commenced in the year 2000 and due to its demand it has been produced every two years uh, with now 11 editions. Uh, as you'll see at the top there, the uh, 2020 edition is available in 10 language, 10 languages, and the current edition, the 2022, is available uh, with some core uh, chapters in English, French, and Spanish, uh, with other translations into other languages uh, currently being undertaken. The WMR uh, 2020 has also been awarded gold in the 2021 International Annual Report Design Awards for its online platform, including uh, interactive data visualization and our toolkits. The World Migration Report is a global reference report used by officials, media, researchers, and teachers and students throughout the world. Given the report's relevance in education and the feedback the division has been receiving from educators over the years, a toolkit has been prioritized to support high school educators in accessing report materials that are tailored to their needs. The World Migration Educators Toolkit includes a set of modules to practically support educators teaching students about human migration. And like the World Migration Report, the toolkit has also been peer reviewed by migration experts and educators in the field. It's very important to us that the World Migration Report offers a complete global analysis. So too, the Educators Toolkit contributes to an international curriculum on migration, offering timely research and analysis on topical migration issues from a global perspective. The toolkit includes content from all six UN regions, Africa, Asia, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean, North America and Oceania. The toolkit is organized as follows. The first section covers the fundamentals of migration where there are six modules responding to the questions, what, who, why, when, where, and how. And these are key modules in understanding the core concepts about migration and how migration manifests around the world. 
The second section elaborates on key thematic issues about migration, the first being the implications of migration, which addresses the themes of integration, social cohesion, and the contributions of migrants. Other cross-cutting issues include digital technology and migration, disinformation about migration, climate change, and a new module on COVID-19 that looks at the impact on migrants, migration processes, and mobility. So in each module, you will find a set of instructions, uh, resources, and these resources come in the form of reports, but also links to YouTube videos and other digital media. Uh, text case studies to uh, support students reading comprehension and data case studies to uh, support data literacy. And each module ends with an interactive scenario catered toward group learning and designed to spark creativity. Uh, these include mock United Nations type scenarios that relate to a challenging issue on migration. So here is a text case study from module five, How Do People Migrate? where the students will first be presented with an article. So here's one on the amplification of migration by uh, Dr. Lauren Khalif. And on the right hand, you will see some uh, example questions that accompany the text to support reading comprehension. And here we have a data case study uh, from module eight on climate change, which prompts students to compare the IDMC data on new internal displacements due to conflict and disasters. And you'll see here that the questions are designed to support data literacy, asking questions not only about the details of the figure, but the text describing the data as well. So we have strived to make the toolkit as accessible and flexible as possible to meet diverse learning needs. You'll see here that uh, we've embedded throughout the digital toolkit, videos of interest designed for those working digitally. We do, however, have a PDF version available, as we know that internet access may not be available in all teaching circumstances. So the PDF version uh, provides all the tools a teacher will need to conduct these activities. And this next section uh, will describe some uh, of the ways in which we can use the digital interactive version of the toolkit. So here is a video um, of the home page where all modules can be accessed. And as described earlier, uh, you'll find detailed uh, instructions and multimedia resources to support teachers' facilitation on uh, any given topic. Uh, and teachers can draw on the module contents with uh, great flexibility uh, depending on their students' needs. Uh, this is an example of in-module navigation. And as you'll see, uh, the digital platform allows students and educators to use the color menu to navigate through different classroom activities. And this is an example from the module titled, uh, What is Migration? Uh, additionally, the right-hand navigation allows you to advance to uh, the next module or jump between modules via the drop-down menu. And uh, this video demonstrates the movement uh, from the What is Migration module to the other fundamental topics of who, why, uh, and where do people migrate. This is one of my, my favorite slides uh, to demonstrate that the content is interactive, making it easy for both teachers and students to view and complete module activities. So the data case studies, for example, check students' learning uh, of the topics through a variety of interactive exercises, from estimating figures with a slider to uh, this multiple choice. And then later down, uh, you'll see uh, students' ability to uh, actually fill in the chart um, as they do their own research. You'll also see uh, throughout these interactive exercises, uh, students are able to uh, fill in their short answer responses uh, to questions uh, directly on the platform. So this really does illustrate uh, the text case studies and uh, data case studies that were, were shown earlier. And uh, for each interactive activity, students uh, can print their work or save their work as a PDF. And again, another great uh, aspect of uh, the digital interactive. So we have turned the interactive scenarios into uh, presentation and slide decks. 
so educators can easily facilitate the activities in class with the aid of a computer. And uh, this interactive scenario, for example, draws on the features of the Duolingo app, uh, language app um, and asks students to enhance language services for migrants uh, based on key migration data and analysis. So to, to conclude, here are some key takeaways about the toolkit. It presents up-to-date information uh, about the state of global migration. It represents a diverse geographic landscape, addresses cross-cutting issues on migration, such as gender, climate change, and digital technology. Uh, it offers a flexible curriculum applicable to many courses, uh, such as human geography, political science, and sociology. And we have prioritized accessibility in the delivery of the educator's toolkit. So this interactive toolkit responds to the demand and uptake of digital interactive tools. Uh, so we have two embedded uh, the World Migration Digital Interactive Platform into uh, many of these classroom activities. And as discussed before, the toolkit and its contents are based on the World Migration Report, which is available in multiple languages. And of course, we also have the PDF version in case uh, teachers are unable to access the digital interactive. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Jenna, for taking us through the digital platform. And the link, of course, is in the chat for those who want to have a look at um, the new interactive uh, platform and have a play around themselves with uh, it and its contents. I'll now turn to, um, to Nacho. Jose Ignacio Martin Galan, uh, uh, he's his full name. He's the head of IOM's online communications uh, unit and he is based in Manila. So we also have to say a special thanks for staying up very late Nacho and joining us um, in uh, the webinar and the launch event. It's been wonderful to work with you, of course, and you've really brought your uh, more than two decades of experience in the field um, to bear on this particular project and we're really grateful that you could join us. So over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Marie and colleagues. Thank you for the opportunity and for the good collaboration. It's a pleasure for me. So this is one of those um, appointments and even if it's late in Manila, it's always a pleasure to be part of. Um, Adrian, if, if as discussed, if, if you can please share the screen for me because I have some technical issues to, to share it from here, just uh, with the Educators Toolkit, but I'm not gonna go too much into that one because the, the presentation that was done before is already very comprehensive. But basically the, the main key points uh, and goals of this interactive uh, Educators Toolkit is first complementing the, the World Migration Report interactive page that Marie was already mentioning, and both are uh, really complementing and supporting each other and making data more, more accessible, uh, more interactive. And, uh, and as it was mentioned before, providing a tool to educators and students to be part of the conversation, to be part of the conversation and to use and have uh, the possibility of, of uh, discussing, having multiple different conversations about the many facts and data collected on the, on the report, which I think is very rich. And also fostering that those conversations are more horizontal uh, with the different audiences. And when I mean, what I mean about horizontal is that uh, no matter if we are a, a big organization or an individual, uh, we are at the same level in terms of as interlocutors, right? And, 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 and having all the data and access to all this information uh, helps us to balance and to be at the same level uh, on, or as interlocutors at collective or at individual level. Um, yes, uh, Adrian, just to mention, okay, that was already uh, presented, but two of the, the, the tools that I think are very interesting, if we go to the data, to the case on who, what is migration data case study, and it was just recently uh, shown, if we go to, yes, to data case study. So for me, Two of the, of the tools that I like a lot in this interactive are the ones where you can place, uh, trying to, to, to understand how many, uh, how many fatalities, for example, occurred, and, and trying to see how far or close you were from reality. 
if you can just uh, try to, yes, as it was shown before, and then you can submit. And, and I think this is very useful from a journalistic point of view, but as an from an educator's point of view as well, uh, because it helps the student or the, the different participants to realize what's the real, uh, what's the real intuition that we have, the first intuition we have, and then what's the reality. Sometimes there is a big gap between both, both two. And then if we scroll down and we go towards the, the chart, which was already presented, it's the same concept, right? So you can try your own chart, you can try it. Uh, and then afterwards, if you, you, can, you can see what the real path is, if you can try just to play with it a bit. Yes. Uh, and then you can guess, and then you saw the real path basing on, based, of, of course, on the information that you had before uh, as a student, on the interactive, on other tools that you could have access to. So um, basically, and then if we can go towards the interactive scenario, please. Yes, and, and then you, you have here the instructions. What, what is also particularly useful, if you click on the, on the top, on this to make it presentation, on that, yes, here. So it's also useful that you can immediately make it as a, as a presentation, as a slideshow. So it's useful also for the, not only for the student, but particularly for the, for the facilitator, for the educator to use that immediately. And in any case, uh, just to conclude, because I don't want to take much of the time. Uh, for me, um, I think that the, the, big, the big point, the, the big uh, a positive uh, element of this uh, toolkit that, that, and the idea, the vision that Marie and the team had when they approached us to, to collaborate on this, is that perceptions about reality and of course perceptions about migration are shaped by many stories, by many narratives. Being those real information, uh, misinformation, news, fiction, a series in Netflix, messages on social media, on networks, the last conversation I had in the gym, at the gym. So, and sometimes our brains forget what's the difference between fiction, non-fiction, and even if we try very hard, it's difficult to, to shape and to really have always the clear picture of what's the truth and what is just part of our, our, our imagination or our, our interpretation of reality. So having these possibilities of interacting with real data, but touching also and participating, learning by doing, uh, I hope can help also the different actors to better discuss to better support constructive narratives about migration and then therefore better actions, reactions or, or, uh, or agreements to, to work all together to make migration work for all. So uh, for me, these are the main points and I'm of course open for any questions or any, uh, uh, any questions or any comments that you could have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Nacho. And, and again, we really enjoyed working with you and, and your team. Uh, we had kind of realized the PDF, so the kind of core content, but seeing it come to life, seeing uh, how creative um, you and your team have been and our collaborators in terms of making it an accessible tool, uh, both for, for teachers, but also for students has been um, a real pleasure. Another real pleasure is um, to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Clements, um, who has worked with us and is a partner on the World Migration Report kind of more broadly. Um, and we're really delighted that you could join us uh, today, Michael. For those who don't know, um, Michael is the Director of Migration, Displacement and Humanitarian Policy, and he's a Senior Fellow at the Center for Global Development in Washington, DC. He is one of the world's leading experts on aspects related to migration and, and he's a go-to person for particular areas around migration and development. So we're really delighted to both be working with you and to learning to be, to be learning from you and to, um, to be having uh, content peer reviewed, of course, uh, by you, Michael, but also for you to be joining us today 
uh, in this webinar on the Educators Toolkit. So I will I'll hand over to you and um, allow uh, the audience and us to hear your insights and then we'll also hear from Alejandro as well. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mari. Can you hear me okay? Hi, everyone. Uh, so I th that was very nice of Mari to say once in a while I offer her opinions on stuff, but I am not, uh, I, I, I don't, I wasn't involved in the creation of the toolkit and I, I don't deserve any of the credit for its fantasticness. Uh, Mari just asked me to come as a kind of a one person focus group of, of the, of the uh, of potential uh, users for the toolkit to just offer some thoughts about it. Uh, I teach migration uh, in economics now at, at Georgetown University. In fact, I'm getting ready for a, a, our next class tomorrow. So I'm a very active uh, migration educator in that sense. And the, the only thought I want to offer is just that I really love the Migration Educators Toolkit. I, I think that all students on earth could uh, could benefit a lot from seeing some portion of it before they finish school. I really mean all students uh, uh, because this is just a understanding migration is a critical ingredient to being not not just a, a worker in in migration in some sense, but being a, being an informed citizen uh, in in this century uh, with uh, with so many crucial policy issues revolving around migration. Uh, uh, not just graduate students, undergraduates, and even high school students can can benefit from different aspects of this toolkit. So I, I just wanted to uh, be, beyond that just blanket endorsement. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about uh, why it's so compelling to me. Um, you know, in the in the parable from ancient Hindu texts uh, that I think most of us have heard, a group of blind men encounter an elephant for the first time, and they sharply disagree about what an elephant is. Uh, one uh, touches the tusk and says, well, elephants are like spears. Another touches the leg and claims that, no, they're like tree trunks. And another one touches the trunk and insists that elephants are like snakes. And the, the poignant thing about the parable is that they're all right. Uh, and they're all wrong in a way that prevents any kind of productive discussion about how having an elephant in your village could be beneficial or challenging. And our, our public discourse about migration is a lot like this. And, and so many interactions I have with, with people in, in, in government, in, in society, uh, are just uh, uh, lacking the ability to have a, a basic productive conversation uh, about migration and migration policy because, uh, because, because there isn't a common reference of not just facts, but, uh, but, uh, but, but meanings. Um, often it becomes clear that people are starting from completely different ideas about what makes a migrant. Is a migrant a refugee, a job seeker, a lone worker, a family, a child? Is it a person on a plane or a raft? Is it a person with an MBA or a subsistence farm? Is it fundamentally a partner or fundamentally a, a threat? They're all starting from completely different mental references for migration. Is it a flood? Is it a trickle? Is it a fuel of some kind, a burden, a renewal? an invasion. If you ask Americans how many foreign-born citizens and green card holders there are, the average answer in poll data is 36% of the population, which is more a, a lot more than triple its, uh, its real value. The star economist at Harvard University, Stephanie Stancheva, collectively calls this the fog of immigration. And at best, the fog of immigration is a source of confusion. At worst, it's an opportunity for, for uh, entrepreneurs and political disinformation. So who will blow away the fog, uh, allowing at least some chance of a reasoned and fact-based debate? Uh, not most politicians, for whom standing strongly for facts about migration carries all the political risks of appearing to stand strongly for or strongly against migration itself and not most academic researchers who really receive uh, zero career rewards for widely disseminating basic facts in a comprehensible way. Uh, that essential role falls to very few. At the national level, I can think of great examples. In the US, philanthropists support uh, efforts by the Migration Policy Institute, the Pew Charitable Trusts, to just document basic facts for productive conversation. But at, at the international level for, for years, that crucial role has been played uh, by Mari and her team at, by the World Migration Report. Now, of course, it takes a truly committed and interested citizen to sit down and read the 540 pages of the superb World Migration, Divorce, World Migration Report uh, 2022. There have to be other channels to reach the public and a critical one is, is education of young people. Um, 
that people before leaving school at whatever level they're being schooled from high school to graduate school, where people need to encounter basic conversations about what is a migrant, what kind of people migrate, how many people migrate, uh, why do people migrate? These are the questions that are that are engaged by the World Migration Report more broadly, but specifically by this toolkit. And it, it makes me wonder what if everyone received as a part of their basic education or their specialized education, the idea that half a century ago, 97.5% of all people on earth lived in exactly the same country they were born in. And now, half a century later in the age of mobility, that 97.5% has ticked down to 96.5%. Today, 96.5% of people live in exactly the same country they were born in. What would our public discussions look like uh, with that perspective underlying them, uh, a set of shared facts? What if everybody understood that the UN projects, I'm talking about the world population prospects, that by 2100, 40% of all working age human beings will be African? What would our public discourse look like then? What would our uh, contemplation of migration policy look like then? What if everyone understood that it is possible at, for the same migrant to be motivated both by seeking safety from violence and the opportunity to contribute economically at the same time, the same person. What would our public discourse look like then? The Educators Toolkit not only asks these questions, it asks questions that are more immediate and practical for an educator uh, like me. Like, what if the understanding of these basic facts were reached not by passively listening to a lecture or reading a tome, but by students doing their own carefully guided data analysis, by studying cases relevant to them, by role-playing recommendations for real people or debates and negotiations with, with personal stakes. The, the Educator's Toolkit reflects a, 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 a passage from Plutarch's Moralia, which is really a guiding principle for me, which is that education is not filling a vessel, it's lighting a fire. That's a paraphrase, uh, but that's, uh, that's a that's a fundamental insight. Uh, the, the understanding of, of all of these things is much deeper, much more lasting, much more owned by the student and later by the educated citizen when it arises through the kind of interactive exercises that that Tamari and her team are, are providing here. And most educators know this. Uh, it's just they often don't have the resources or the time to to build these things, uh, much less build them. So so uh, so 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 beautifully and and usably as uh, as as this team has built them so there's no excuse anymore not to not to offer them to students we have them at the highest quality they're sitting there for free online uh, i hope they allow for more conversations about elephants that see the whole elephant and uh i'd love to talk with you uh, um, more about this fantastic new resource so thanks a lot for inviting me thank you so much michael um your words are inspiring, actually, uh, for us to keep going and expand uh, other kind of avenues and so forth. But I should confess, and I have to say this before I introduce um, Alejandro as well, that part of the inspiration um, has been um, watching my children, teenagers, navigate through, you know, textbooks that are very static, that are highly inaccurate. Um, not related to IB. This is why I have to <laughs> say this before Alejandro starts. This is why we went to IB, um, uh, because they have been outside that realm. But IB has been a natural partner for us in terms of, you know, value alignment and understanding the importance of having engaging tools, the importance of having balanced, rigorous curriculum materials and so forth. So part of it has been inspired by seeing something that I think is, you know, problematic. And obviously I'm not going to name um, the textbook and, and, uh, and go into that sort of detail, but also understanding and realizing that through partnerships um, that we can create something that is quite meaningful and influential in terms of actually allowing young people to be able to engage in the topic and really think about it critically without having to just do rote learning and, and having a sort of like a passive interaction with education, as you say, lighting the fire is particularly um, interesting and, and important for us. 
the, the bad side or the sad side for my son who's starting IB, the IB diploma program next academic year is that he has chosen geography and he will be doing <laughs> and using um, the educator's toolkit, which um, I've explained to him and he's not too keen on, but, um, uh, but he loves geography. Um, and we talk about migration a lot at home and uh, he's been one of our, I guess, uh, influences or, uh, you know, inspirations, one of, our, one of the people, uh, and there are thousands uh, of people around the world who can benefit from, from a toolkit like this. And as Jenna mentioned, we have had it uh, peer reviewed by teachers, we've had it uh, peer reviewed by um, uh, analysts and migration academics and so forth. And there's a question in the chat in terms of who is it to be used for. Yes, it was designed for um, high school students and, and uh, certainly the final years like IB Diploma, but we actually have used the contents uh, to do training of member state officials, for example, especially given the policy turbidity and me people moving from job to job who may not necessarily have the fundamentals of migration. Um, down pat. So thank you very much for that. It was a, a long segue into introducing Alejandra. We have been delighted to be able to work with Alejandro Moreno, who is um, uh, our main focal point at uh, International Baccalaureate. He is the curriculum manager. He holds a bachelor's degree in international affairs and literature and master's degree in education and humanistic studies. And through um, Alejandro and his team, we have been able to, I think, take on board some very, very useful insights, but also think about things in a more expansive manner beyond where we started, which really was actually geography, and to be thinking about things in a, a much more comprehensive way. So we've really enjoyed working with Alejandro and his team and I'll hand over to him now to share his insights and he can step us through some of the key components in terms of from a curriculum perspective um, as well from an IB perspective. So thank you so much for joining us Alejandro and the floor is yours. Thank you very much Marie. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen um, just for a few minutes. Um, so uh, I, I'm really excited uh, for this invitation and also for the work that we've been able to do uh, over the, the last months after I was introduced to the IOM uh, Educators Toolkit. And I'm glad to say, as, as Marie mentioned, um, also the toolkit uh, seems to be ambitioned and as, as it is mentioned in the introduction, uh, in a format that is accessible for a secondary level human geography course. Uh, the geography course is certainly the, the most logical place where the toolkit would be employed by, by educators. Uh, but as we realized, uh, the basic idea of this project was the IOM handed us uh, over the toolkit and we basically wanted to highlight, uh, just like Michael said, with no uh, authoring uh, participation on it, we basically wanted to highlight connections between the toolkit to already existing IB curriculum. So basically just to tell IB educators where can you use this resource that is already set and, and ready to go? Where can you use it? And of course, the, the main point of entry, as I mentioned, was geography. But then we started noticing that in most of the courses, there was a, a clear ways in which uh, educators could, could employ it, um, mainly in the individuals and societies subjects, such as local politics, social and cultural anthropology, um, and in, information technologies in a global society, which will now change to the GL society, your business management, economics, history, etc. But also in what we call the, the, the core subjects, uh, such as theory of knowledge, extended essay, uh, but not to list all of them. But as, as we soon realized after exploring the toolkit is uh, there were many more subjects that at first instance would not seem uh, to focus on migration, but that clearly had links that, that called for the use of the resource, such as language and literature, where uh, students discuss global issues. And it seems that an increasing number of students are addressing migration as one of the global issues that they are interested in. Uh, and then of course, uh, our middle years program was uh, the, the secondary point of entry, uh, both for individuals and societies, but also for interdisciplinary uh, studies. And uh, as we kept on working, we realized that many of our colleagues, for example, in the primary years program, the PYP, were also working on units of inquiry around migration. 
So even though the research is meant uh, for an audience of secondary level, we realize that this is a resource that many educators around the world will probably be able to use uh, both as an entry point as the and discussion starter, as well as um, instead of doing a scavenger hunt around the internet for uh, cu or curating their own resources, which of course they will continue to do. Uh, here we have a very solid uh, resourceful material that they can just take and bring into the classroom uh, that, that will surely serve as something for them to build on. So uh, going out of the very specific IB elements, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to more general uh, things. This is, this, these are the approaches, sorry, uh, to, to, to learning and how well, we think teaching and learning should be at the IB, but this is, these are probably things that all educators, uh, IB and non-IB can relate to. These are some of the skills that, and I think more important than the content and the specific questions that might be answering the models. These are general skills that I think the, the using the toolkit and engaging with it, as well as the, the general um, world migration report can do. Uh, research skills, most of the models um, do not only ask questions about the information that is already in the toolkit, but invite students to look for their own resources, to look at additional websites for additional materials, and basically to conduct their own inquiries to pose their own questions. And uh, I especially like that it, it uh, analyzes multiple format sources. So students are, are getting engaged not only with text, but also with data, uh, videos. Uh, it also fosters thinking and communication skills because all models have an activity where they have to present both individually we in group, we do role playing, and that is of course connected also with social skills. And finally, self-management skills. Uh, I think COVID has highlighted the not only hybrid education, but also the, the use that students have for asynchronous activities where they are able to manage their time, to do things on their own space and at their own rhythm. And I think especially the digital version of the toolkit will facilitate this. Uh, it, it, not all the learning will happen inside of the classroom, but an increasing amount of it will happen on the student's own time and when they are basically processing. And so here are some of the highlights or takeaways that I would, that I think all educators will, will have about the World Migration Educators Toolkit. One, it helps to bring the topic of migration into the classroom in an innovative and meaningful way. Uh, for some educators, this might mean a session, a 30-minute or a 45-minute session. For others, it might be a whole unit or uh, especially as we move up uh, to high school and college, it might even mean uh, doing a whole semester on uh, a, a, a whole course on migration. Uh, it provides educators with ready-to-use resources and activities that facilitate instructional planning and delivery. It doesn't mean, of course, that everything will be ready for their course, depending on what that is, but it does provide uh, building blocks that educators can put together quite easily, and, uh, and, and especially that it might facilitate work among different educators from, uh, from diverse uh, subjects. Uh, that is probably what I would highlight. Um, as a former uh, coordinator at, at, at schools in Mexico, I used to see teachers struggle to do interdisciplinary and collaborative planning because they would try to force subjects into something, into any topic that, that they had decided on. And I think what the, what the toolkit promotes is uh, showing how interdisciplinary planning can be done in a purposeful way around an important issue. Uh, also, one of the things that I, I highlight about the toolkit is that it, it's not an ending point. Uh, but rather it's a starting point for then maybe jumping into the world migration report. As Michael mentioned, few people uh, in high school especially will probably look into the complete document for the, for the world migration report. But after looking through the toolkit, they might be invited to consult particular chapters that are of their interest. And this is, uh, again, one of the great advantage of the resource that it it presents uh, migration in a light to the students that may resonate with their interests, uh, be that because they're, they're interested in digital uh, technology, and, uh, and of course the toolkit improves on that, that a lot. If someone is taking economics or business management, and they might learn about the economic side of migration, or if they are particularly interested in the arts, 
this might be something that that calls to them. Uh, uh, so I'm really excited, uh, both as an educator and as a curriculum manager, to see resources like this uh, being deployed. And I hope that we can continue uh, building on this strategic partnership. Uh, that, that would be uh, it for me, unless we have a particular question. So thank you, Mary. Thanks so much, Alejandro. I really appreciate it. And it was great to see those slides in terms of how it sort of connects to different, you know, subjects. And also, you know, the, uh, I'm going to get the acronyms wrong, but Middle Years Program, MYP, I think it was. Yeah, so the, so the different kind of stages um, in terms of uh, the IB's uh, curriculums and so forth. So, and as I explained earlier, we have actually used it for you know, for senior officials uh, in terms of some of the, the core components as well. So it's very adaptable. We wouldn't make the uh, senior officials go through the classroom exercises, but, but, um, but at least using the content to highlight some of the key aspects that Michael mentioned around definitions, around having multiple or mixed motivations. For example, you, someone is not just a refugee, they are also wanting to forge safe and meaningful lives and you know, income generation and vice versa. So we go into those sort of discussions uh, as well and it gives the opportunity to really have uh, very meaningful exchanges on content. We have a few minutes left for questions and thank you very much um, for participants who are posting questions in the chat. I think that, um, and let me just see if I can, Make my, I'm doing this on a laptop. Milda's question on the age group. I think we've answered that for you, Milda. But um, please follow up if we if we haven't covered that sufficiently. But it is quite flexible. You could use it in a bachelor's course, a master's course. You could use it at a high school level, um, so forth and so on. So I think we've covered that one. Um, Lisa has asked. How often will the contents of the toolkit, especially migration statistics, be updated once a year or more frequently? I will hand over to Jenna to answer that if she wants to, otherwise I can field it, but I'm moderating, so I'll hand it over to Jenna. Thanks. Uh, Mary, um, I think uh, most precisely we'll update uh, the contents uh, according to the publication of the World Migration Report. Um, and as that develops, but we also follow very closely the release of uh, various uh, statistics. Um, so whether that be in June uh, when UNHCR releases their data um, or UNDESA uh, releases population data, uh, we certainly uh, keep an eye on um, how, how that influences the, the module content. Um, as well as making sure that all of the, the links are up to date um, and as most of our uh, content uh, fields outward uh, for students to do their uh, individual research on um, statistics, uh, we'll, we, we make sure that those uh, links are all up to date as well. Great, thanks Jenna. And um, people might not be aware of how often we do the World Migration Report. You said every edition it's updated, so we uh, have been uh, doing uh, editions of the World Migration Report on a biennial basis, which is every two years. So the next World Migration Report will be released at the end of 2023, next year. Uh, we do, as Jenna said, obviously take into account the latest data and statistics and different global data sets come out at different times of the year. So we consolidate the latest data um, and put that forward in uh, the interactive and also in the toolkits. I have a question from Miriam uh, in terms of planning to translate and make available the interactive toolkit in other languages. We're currently working on Spanish, but we're also fundraising for other languages. We've put quite a lot of effort into language accessibility of the flagship report itself. So we've moved from kind of one uh, language in 2005. There were um, five languages in 2015. And now the 2020, the current um, previous to current edition was in 10 language outputs. We're currently translating the World Migration Report as we speak into different languages. We release it in English and then it is translated. And uh, we do the six UN languages. Plus we're trying to really um, put emphasis on languages from developing countries because we know that 
developing uh, country contexts are particularly important for official languages. So for the 2020 edition, we had chapters in Swahili, for example. We're looking at uh, Swahili's just commissioned Swahili again for the 2022 edition. And then also uh, looking at other languages such as Bengali, for example, for the current edition. The, as you know, language translation is quite expensive. So if you have any fundraising ideas, please let us know. But um, only to say that uh, the first priorities are IOM's official languages. So English, Spanish and French are key for, um, for the toolkit and the interactive uh, platform. And, and those are the ones that we really have to prioritize. Um, I have a question from Yasa, which is for Nacho. If you don't mind, Nacho, I will read it out for you. Um, how does the image transmitted by the media shape people's perceptions of migration and migrants? That's a kind of a big question, okay. but your insights would okay, be... Okay, that's a very, very big <laughs> question. Well, thank you very much, but I'm happy, I'm happy to, to take it. So the, finally, the media, uh, they have an important role because at the end reality, since the beginning of, of humanity, stories have made the difference in terms of how we understand and shape the, the, our perceptions about reality. And the media, for a long time, the media as we understand, the traditional media, um, first the newspapers, then TV, radio, etc., they have been the big storytellers of our times, right? However, when we talk about this impact, we have many theories about the impacts. And uh, one of them, for example, is the one of the twisted flow, right? saying, look, what the, Im the impact of media on an individual is afterwards shaped by the different experiences of that individual. Not the same a person that maybe saw the toolkit and, and participated for a year in a course uh, with different professors about migration, and a person who never was exposed to that reality or that ha had different experiences. But today we, don't, we have more than that. We have the, the digital space, which has, a multi, has multiplied the, 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 the possible actors and communicators. And then it's not a two-step flow anymore. It's an end-step flow, uh, which can go beyond what we can even imagine. So then there are many, many theories about that. I particularly like a lot the one of, about cultivation by Gebner that talks about how he mentioned about, he, he created that concept of the mean wall syndrome. So how people are exposed to not only the media, but particularly TV, were really, really uh, impacted in terms of how they perceived the reality and how they reacted, even if it was fiction. So in many occasions, it's not only the media, it's also a series. If you watch a movie about the Second World War or you didn't, that changes how you perceive things. So uh, then media, of course, they shape a lot. But what I always believe is that if you have people who have tools, education, face-to-face -face interactions, no matter what the message by the media, from the media, from the colleagues from your football team, from your parents, your family are, if you have all those tools, then you, it's, you are better equipped to make your own judgments and decisions. And I think this is what this Educators Toolkit is about, right? On helping everyone to make their own assessment, their own, their own perception and, and their own, uh, to, owner, to own their own views and, and share them uh, as they want, as they, as they think that can be more, more useful for society. So I hope this, answers it's a very very big answer for a very difficult question but i think basically it's complicated it, there are many many factors but for sure the more we are prepared the more we are have media literacy education the more the different actors the, the society is prepared to to better in decode those informations thank you Thank you very much, um, Nacho, and it's a totally predictable response from me, as my team know, but I, <laughs> Yasser is still online, so I would like to um, direct him to maybe look at two chapters um, of the World Migration Report, kind of series one in the 2018 edition, which is on um, media portrayals in traditional media 
of, uh, me, of Migration and Migrants, and that was written by colleagues at Oxford and Amherst, I think it was. Uh, and then also in the current edition, we have a really great chapter which looks at um, disinformation about migration and the utilisation, increasing utilisation of uh, tech platforms. And that's written by an IOM colleague, actually, um, who uh, is in the media area and also uh, researchers um, from Dublin City University. And that's a really insightful chapter, looking at things from the new perspective around digital platforms and, um, and their use in terms of disinformation. Oh, thank you very much. I think Selena's put, them, <laughs> put the links in the chat. Um, before we, we've got, we've finished with the questions, I would really like to again express enormous thanks to Jenna um, for you know, leading on the finalization of the content of the Educators Toolkit, to Nacho and his team for the collaboration on the interactive platform, which has been fun and really inspiring. And also to Michael and to Alejandro for being such great partners and learning from you um, and your perspectives and teams, um, and also for being willing to work with us. We can be um, challenging at times. We, we, uh, we work in a very uh, fluid environment, uh, working in migration, but we really enjoy learning from you, collaborating, um, certainly to get to an end product. And finally, of course, huge thanks to Celine and Adrian who, who are there as the IOM research people who organize all the webinars and uh, also work on core components of the World Migration Report with us. Um, so thank you very much again for putting together this webinar for us. We really appreciate it. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, those in the audience, I hope that we've answered all of your questions sufficiently, but get in touch with us if you would like to explore other aspects or have any other questions. Thanks again for joining us in the webinar and we look forward to seeing you soon.